Teach me, Lord, to wait down on my knees till in your own good time you answer my pleas. Teach me not to And welcome to Verse of the Day. I'm Brandon Hathaway, the preacher at the West Side Church of Christ in Owensboro, Kentucky. And I want to thank you for joining me today as we uh, again open up our Bibles to study the Word of God. It's always a wonderful opportunity to be able to do so. Um, I'm always thankful to, uh, of course, uh, to wake up in the mornings and uh, uh, have the capability to be able to, to do this, to present the Word of God. And I hope that you are uh, also uh, thankful every day God lets us wake up. So um, today uh, we're going to go and open up our Bibles and go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 30. If you want to go ahead and open up your Bibles to that, and we're going to look at uh, a verse in there. So Deuteronomy chapter 30 and in verse 19, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. So here. In Deuteronomy, it's the, uh, of course, uh, children of Israel are supposed to be entering into the land of Canaan. Um, Moses is preparing them to enter into the land, and in doing so, he uh, continuously is warning the, the children of Israel. He's continuously uh, telling them that they need to be ready, need to prepare themselves, and... Uh, and so here in Deuteronomy 30, I believe, I want to make sure I'm not uh, mistaken, I, I meant to hurry up and read over this one more time, um, but uh, as he prepares them to go into the land of Canaan, um, I, I believe he brings this point out a couple times, but he, he, he tells them as they go into the land, they're supposed to go to a mountain. They're supposed to go to the mountain. And some are staying on the left, and some are going to stand on the right. Um, and he says, and then you're going to have this thing here, and it's going to be a blessing and a cursing. And I'll go ahead and read this verse, and then I'll go into a little bit of explanation. So Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, here it reads, it says, I, have, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. And so as you read that, as we look at this, he says, choose life. He says, but I set before you a blessing and a curse. And as what that is, the, the land of which they are taking over, a blessing and a curse. The opportunity that, it, that, that, that is there, that they're, they're inhabiting here, 
blessing and a curse. The, the word of God, which they have been given from God. Blessing and a curse. Uh, the law that they had, it's a blessing and a curse. And you may sit there and say, well, how is it a blessing and a curse? Well, well then one aspect, it is the blessing that, that we all think it should be, and it should be that way. It should always be the blessing. It, and uh, the point that, you know, it is land of which God has blessed them with. It is land that they were taken in that, that they didn't have to do all the work which they were used to because they were servants there in Egypt and they had done all the work for the Egyptians, um, for the Pharaoh. And, you know, they, they had to work everything. And so now they're in, inheriting this land in which it is going to be flowing with milk and honey. It's going to be so great, so wonderful. It's a blessing from God, right? And then, you know, the fact that they're no longer slaves, blessing from God. God's going to drive out all their enemies, blessing from God. But, here's the big kicker though. If they forsake God, and they turn to idols, just as the Amorites, and just as the Egyptians, just as everybody else, then it becomes a curse, because one, you know, they got punished, those who, who continue to worship idols already, punished for... Uh, not seeing the, the natural things that point to God. But two, they know right from wrong. They've been warned. They, they know the law. God has shown himself to them. They are responsible. They're accountable for their choice. And so when they give themselves over to these things and they disobey the commands of God, it becomes a curse because now they have to face the wrath of God. Now God says that he, he would allow the enemies to overtake them, that he would not be there to defend them. And so it becomes a, a curse. And that's why he says, choose life. Therefore, choose life that you both, you and your descendants, may live. So, so it's been put in front of them. It's the same thing for us today, though. We have the word of God. It is a blessing. It is a blessing above all their blessings, because without it, we wouldn't know about the blood of Christ. We wouldn't know that we need to be baptized to wash away our sins. Uh, without it, we wouldn't know the path of which we have to take in order to get to heaven. But once you've accepted it, once you've heard it, once you've acknowledged it, you, you're accountable for your actions. You're accountable for your choices that you make. And so, therefore, it becomes a curse also if you choose to reject it, when you choose if you choose to go into sin, you choose uh, money over the Word of God, you choose people over the Word of God, you choose these other things, and you set your treasures here on earthly possessions, you're going to be accountable. And so it becomes a blessing and a curse. And so let us always choose life. Let us always choose the right, the right path. So I hope that you do that. I hope that you make the right choice as you continue to live your life from day to day as long as God continues to bless us with life. And we won't have to face the wrath of God. So I hope that you take your time, read the, the remaining of this chapter, uh, maybe study a little more than just this chapter to get the understanding as they're here at the end of the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, as Joshua is about to lead them across the, the river and to Canaan, and as they go into to battles after that to, to overtake the land. So thank you for joining me today. Hope that you'll join me tomorrow. I'll talk to you later.